Good afternoon, everybody. Anthony Aniano here from Rotoballer Radio and Rotoballer.com with a look at the Week 8 Fantasy Baseball Waiver Wire. Pitchers you need to add for your fantasy baseball team for the week beginning Monday, May 15th. Full disclosure, recording this on Thursday, May 11th, so obviously numbers can change between now and the time you watch this, depending on when these pitchers pitch. Injuries can occur, promotions, demotions may occur as well. As always, we use Yahoo roster percentages at our t- as our talking point, trying to keep the list to players at or below 50% rostered on Yahoo.com. Don't forget, head over to Rotoballer.com right now, sign up for that MLB Premium Pass using the promotional code ACES, save money at checkout, and get all sorts of great time, uh, uh, great all sorts of great content over at Rotoballer.com, including, including Team Sync optimizers, uh, lineup optimizers, Team Sync tools, you name it, Rotoballer.com has you covered, as well as all the great free content for whatever sport you're looking for, DFS, season-long sports betting, whatever it is you want to look into. Like and subscribe right here to the Rotoballer YouTube channel, and download the Rotoballer app for free, all the great content right there at your fingertips. Follow me on Twitter at A Aniano Fantasy. All right, so let's take a look at some of the pitchers available week eight, the week beginning Monday, May 15th. And my number one ad at the pitcher position this week, it was a tough one because I like a couple of these starters today. I have four starters and a couple of relievers to talk about. And my starters, it was tough. I, I like a few of the guys I'm mentioning. But my number one, I'm going to take a flyer on it coming off of injury, Ranger Suarez of the Philadelphia Phillies. Only 18% rostered on Yahoo. Puts him at about 82% available. So I, I like that number for a guy who, don't forget, in 2021, pitched to a 1-3-6 ERA. Now, he hasn't pitched this year. He's been injured. Matt Stram filled in great. He's now been moved to the bullpen. Okay? He's starting Saturday, May 13th, uh, is uh, Ranger Suarez for the Philadelphia Phillies. So it's not going to help you this week, but it gives you a gauge of what to expect. Now, who knows how deep he goes? Four or five innings, maybe 80 pitchers. His next start, the start you would be adding him for, is for the right around 500 Chicago Cubs, where he's scheduled to start next Friday, May 19th. Suarez is a pitcher who last year in 2022 threw 155 in a third innings with 129 strikeouts. Not a high strikeout guy, about 7.5 Ks per nine innings, with a walk rate of just over three walks per nine. But he pitched to a 3.65 ERA, with an XFIP of 382. So it was legitimate. There wasn't any real luck, good or bad, involved in what you saw out of Suarez. A sub-4 ERA, a sub-4 XFIP. Whip a little high, 1.33. That's what happens when you're walking over three batters per nine innings. And he won 10 games on a Philly team that hopefully this year gets it going and you can add some wins with that starting staff down the stretch. Opposing hitters last year hit 248 against Ranger Suarez. So add him. We see how he does Saturday. If he pitches great, it's going to cost you more. If he's, if he's mediocre, five innings, two, three runs, maybe you get him for a little bit less. But I do like him for the remainder of the season. At number two, my second ad of the week, Brian Bello of the Boston Red Sox. Only 8% rostered. And he's the example why at this point in the year, we don't look whole season. We shrink it down a bit. But there are some concerns as well. Over the last two weeks, Brian Bello has 16 strikeouts in 16 innings. It's an in, a K per inning. And an ERA of 2.81 with a whip of 1.31. And he's won both of his starts. On the season, that ERA sits over 5. 5.01. It's a scary number. It's an ugly number. Even though he's got 24 strikeouts in 23 in the third innings. 9.26 Ks per 9. But here's the caveat. With that 5.01 ERA... He has an XFIP of 344. He's pitched to some bad luck. It, it, to me, that XFIP of 344 tells me he has the ability to write that ship like he has over his last 16 innings and continue lowering that ERA. Now, the problem right now is Boston is bringing back James Paxton. So they're up to six starters. My concern was, is Bellow going to be the odd man out? Well, those last 16 innings have at the very least bought him another start. He's slated to go Wednesday, May 17th against the Seattle Mariners. At number three, New York Yankee Domingo Herman. Now, he's the highest rostered player of the starting pitchers, 46% rostered. His last two starts, he's pitched fairly well, 13 and a third innings, an ERA of 2.03, 11 strikeouts in those 
13 and a third innings. His whip's been exceptional in that span, 0.68. The batting average against on this season is a minuscule, the lowest of all the starters here today, a minuscule 176. On the season, he has 44 strikeouts in 39 and a third innings. It's over 10 Ks per nine and a 4.35 ERA, but an XFIP of 3.80. Again, a little bit of bad luck for Domingo Herman. His whip is on the one. I'll take that any day at 0.94 as he's only walking 2.9 batters per nine innings. Now, he's pitching momentarily today. Today, Thursday, May 11th, he's slated against the Tampa Bay Rays. Let's see how he does. It's a tough matchup. Anybody has a tough time against the Rays. So see how he does. Again, alter fabs, alter waiver wire order, whatever you got to do, depending on how he does. His next start is also not a great one, May 17th against the Toronto Blue Jays. And number four, my fourth and final starter to mention today, Texas Rangers starter Dane Dunning. Dane Dunning filling in for Jacob deGrom is doing a very nice Jacob deGrom impersonation. Now deGrom, last I heard was yesterday, he's going to be out two to three more weeks. So for Jacob deGrom, that means seven more months. Who are we kidding? But nonetheless, Dane Dunning over the last 14 days, not a high strikeout guy. And that's the one caveat on Dane Dunning. Only nine strikeouts in his last 14 and a third innings. 5.65 Ks per nine. On the season, Dane Dunning only 19 Ks in 31 and a third. It's 5.46 Ks per nine. So that's the downside to Dane Dunning. However, over the last 14 days, the ERA is 2.51. On this season, the ERA is 1.72. I cannot ignore a 1.72 ERA. He's got three wins on this season. I know you don't chase wins, but they are as count. You count them. They're a stat in a 5 by 5 road up. Now, his expected, his XFIP is high, so he's pitching to some good luck. His XFIP is 4.54, but his expected ERA is at 3.09. Batting average against is exceptional at 180. He's only 23% rostered on Yahoo, making him available in 77% of leagues. His next start, though, again, could scare some people off May uh, Monday the 15th against the Atlanta Braves. So to recap the starters, number one, Ranger Suarez of the Phillies. Number two, Brian Bello of the Boston Red Sox. Domingo Herman, number three. And then Dane Dunning, again, you're managing him with the DeGrom injury, but Dane Dunning sits at number four. Now, real quick, relief pitchers. Jose Alvarado of the Philadelphia Phillies goes down with an elbow situation. He's going to be out for a little bit of time. I loved him as the best reliever on that Philly staff, and he was showing that. So now the question becomes, where do the saves go in Philadelphia? You have Greg Kimbrell. You have Gregory Soto. You have Sir Anthony Dominguez. And I'll be honest, none of them have been particularly good. I have a feeling in my ad out of those three, though, right now is Kimbrell of the Phillies. 47% rostered, so he's about a 50-50 player, depending on your league. What could scare people away is Kimbrell has been prone to blow up. We know this. His ERA is over 7. Over the last 14 days, his ERA is over 13. However, he does have 3 saves on the season. 21 strikeouts in 14 innings. So the Ks are still there. 13.5 Ks per 9. Okay? And as much as that ERA is terrible on the year, 7.07... His XFIP is 3.72, so he's pitched to some bad luck as well as the season has gone on. I don't love Kimbrell, don't get me wrong, I'm not stamping him as a must-add, but if you're working the waiver wire for saves, Kimbrell could get some for the Philadelphia Phillies in the next couple of weeks. Also available for saves is the committee situation in Chicago with the Cubs. Mark Leiter and Adbert Alzole. Both of them have gotten saves in the last week for the Chicago Cubs. Lighter, 29% rostered. Alzole, 7% rostered. Both of them have pitched terrific. Mark Leiter's pitching to a 1-4-6 ERA on, over the last 14 days. On the season, Mark Leiter Jr., his ERA is 1.13. He's got 25 Ks in 16 innings. Alzole, over on the season, has a 2-4-1 ERA, 18 strikeouts in 18 and two-thirds. Both of them have a save on the year. Both of, them have, both of them have been difficult to hit. Mark Leiter Jr., batting average against of 161. Alzole, a 179 batting average against. If you've got to make a claim for a, club, a Cubs reliever, I strongly prefer Mark Leiter. 
The Ks have been better. The batting average against has been slightly better. The whip is better as well. Okay, Mark Leiter Jr., the preferred reliever for the Chicago Cubs. But you could waterfall this and put Adbert Alizé underneath him if need be. And finally, if you're looking for middle relief dominance, okay, maybe not getting the save opportunities right now, but who knows what the future holds, take a look at Miami Marlins reliever Oscar Brazoban. Okay, only 2% roster, 98% available in Yahoo leagues. 27 strikeouts in 22 and a third innings this year. 11 in his last seven and a third. Over his last seven and a third innings, his ERA is zero. Hasn't given up an earned run, and his whip is 1.09. On the season, his ERA is 2.01. He's only walking about two batters per nine innings, and his batting average against sits at 229. I've added Brazelman in spots where I want to lower my ratios, pick up some strikeouts. He's used about every other day by Miami, and that bullpen, A.J. Puck, is currently closing. He's one injury away, though, from maybe picking up some saves is Brazelman. So my closers, Greg Kimbrell, Mark Leiter Jr., Adbert Alzole, who I'm probably butchering his last name, I apologize, and Oscar Brazelman of the Miami Marlins, if you're looking for holds or just some middle relief and potential holds, as the season goes on. All right, everybody, like I said, go to rotaballer.com, sign up today, use the promotional code ACES, give me a follow on Twitter at AA Aniano Fantasy, and make sure you stay right here, like and subscribe to the Rotoballer YouTube channel. We will see you next time right here on Rotoballer Radio, folks.